Welcome to our last episode of Art Reel from the World Culture Museum in Gothenburg. My name is Rasha Shaban and uh, I'm welcoming my guests here to this episode, uh, part of the uh, festival Illegal taking place at the museum in Gothenburg. Um, let me start by welcoming our guests, Marita Mukonen, uh, co-founder of uh, Perpetuum Mobile and Artists at Risk in Helsinki. Uh, Sanaz Amidi, Chief Executive of Rosetta Art Center in London. Uh, Klaus Grinell, uh, Curator and uh, Research Coordinator at the World Culture Museum in Gothenburg and also teacher at uh, Gothenburg University. Uh, Karin Olsen, uh, Art Educator and Gardener working with the creative social projects with adults and children. Thank you very much for being here with us today and uh, welcome again to uh, our episode. Um, migration has been shaping Europe as long as history can take us back. Migration within Europe and migration coming from outside Europe. Um, 2015 was a peak year with more than one million uh, asylum applications registered in the European Union where countries are still facing challenges as a result of the recession in 2008. And history has shown that at times of economic crisis, there is increase in xenophobia and extremism. And unfortunately, history is repeating itself today. The British-born Cypriot poet, Anthony Anaxoguro, said that art is not about necessarily making change, but about responding. So let me start by Marita here. Marita, you are the uh, co-founder of Artists at Risk program. How do you consider your work to actually be responding to the socio-cultural changes that are happening nowadays in European societies through a program, for example, like Artists at Risk? Really uh, shortly, it's first of all, Artists at Risk is uh, it's not a program for refugees or asylum seekers, so we actually offer breathers for uh, professional art practitioners at risk. So they come out for a certain time period, usually from three months to 12 months. So it's different type of uh, position. And I think that this, this program is, as such, is a response, I would say, to mondial changes, if we want to say mondial crisis. That's what we are going through. It is, it's not about Europe mm -hmm. as such. But basically we are going through, it's just, as you mentioned, 2008, economical crisis, political crisis, ecological crisis. And all these is challenges are actually interconnected today. And, and artists at risk actually, it's often are people who are at the same time, they are politically engaged people and they are part of the different movements, whether they are political movements or ecological movements. And the whole program actually started, it grew out of, um, uh, of a thematic project called Realiant Art. And we were actually mapping and curating its, its art practitioners who joined the movements it's, it's in 2008. They were part of the square movements from Istanbul to it's, it's Madrid, to Barcelona, to Moscow, to Tahir Square Egypt. in Egypt, and, and so on. And all these movements were interconnected. Actually, people went to the streets to it's, it's stand up for similar values. People were demanding it's, it's like equal economical cri uh, uh, rights. They, they wanted it's uh, uh, democratic it's, it's, uh, rights. People were standing up against neoliberal capitalism and also in Europe. So I, I think that it's also this, this uh, artist at risk program is actually bringing uh, to Europe artists and people who were often part of these movements. And when they come to Europe, they usually actually, they engage to local situation. And I think it is uh, how we work in Artist at Risk and in Perpetuum Mobile. Actually, we are looking at this is kind of more, we call it is like uh, mondial changes and what would be the new ways. And this whole Realiant project was actually about that, that people are looking for actually new ways, third, fourth or fifth positions. And that's what happened in the revolutions. That's what happened in the square movements. 
it is not, we are not talking about one ideology, but we are talking about kind of new direction, so to say, where people can come together. And I think that if we want to move on, that's the way. We, we have to actually find it's, it's new ways, new visions, whether, whether it's commons movement, uh, whether it's, it's different kind of movement, but we have to be able to look forward. Let me move to Sana. Sana, you are running a um, community arts centre in East London, and you're working with marginalised groups, and through nurturing um, creative talents. My question is, how do you help these groups to, f to move from feeling marginalised to feel integrated? Mm. How, how does it work in, in your local context? And how can actually art contribute to integration, as controversial as this term can be, mm -hmm. in an area like East London, um, which is mainly populated by my migrants' communities? Mm. I mean, just to give a bit of context, where we are in East London is, is one of the areas with the lowest national indicators of engagement in arts. The average life expectancy is 10 years younger than the rest of London. Um, and we have, you know, uh, it's a real melting pot of different types of cultures. Um, and, and, you know, families that have been there for generations and alongside native communities, alongside newcomers. And so for us, working locally is incredibly important. Whilst we have a fully functioning visual arts centre, um, we only deliver about half of our work in the centre. We, we go to places and spaces that communities will come to, and they can be you know, libraries, community centres, parks, uh, li uh, town halls. And for us, you know, thinking about where we deliver our work is incredibly important, and the gatekeepers of those communities, so that we are speaking the same language culturally, because everybody holds culture. It's not we hold culture and they don't. And that's incredibly important for us, that we have that kind of approach to working with the people that we do in the communities that we do. So for us, um, it's about how we're set up, about where we deliver, and also about diversifying our content of programmes. So we are 100% BAME-led, we're ethnic minority-led. Um, we very much mirror the society and the community in which we deliver in. Um, and the involvement of our artists are, you know, they reflect different cultural backgrounds and different visions. And so to enable that, that's incredibly important, to allow for us to work with communities that are marginalised and take them steps further, further into integration. These communities, the, did you feel that, I mean, they, from any project that you did, that they felt, yeah, we, we feel integrated by doing this, or this is not properly a priority that you're working on this whole integration question? Um, for example, we, we did a, we've done a lot of work working with Muslim young people and children who are not able to access art education that sensitively considers their faith. So we deliver that work and what has happened is that those young people are developing those soft skills and that emotional learning that will help them mm. to integrate and to develop uh, the language that they need in order to have you know, healthy and happier lives. Mm. Um, I think that what we have to um, recognize is that, you know, special attention needs to give to reflection and training. Mm. So um, for us, that's a continuous learning process. How we engage with our communities and our people is a continuous learning process for us. And so we are willing to take risks and fail sometimes yeah. in doing that. Yeah. Thanks, Sanas. Um, I move <coughs> to Klaus. Uh, Klaus, apart from working um, at the World Culture Museum, you're also teaching at Gothenburg University on mm. Middle East, which has witnessed uh, a big exodus of refugees um, in the last um, four or five years, at least. Um, how do you see the role of museums 
in addressing the need of cultural integration and shifting perceptions. Um, museums moving from uh, the traditional sense of uh, collections mm. to being more connected to what is going on in the, in the society, the contemporary, and not just the past and ancient objects. Um, for example, tell us like from the World Country Museum or other museums in Gothenburg or in Sweden, how do they work for integration through arts? I think the key is to find, uh, well, to use the, uh, the collections which are, uh, well, have a large span I in both time and, and space and to connect that to what's going on in the present, what, what people are engaged with them. What we ideally can contribute with is both to acknowledge the, the, the people coming here and letting them tell their stories, but also to connect that to show that it's not only by individual migrants, there are deep patterns like uh, Marita was talking about that this is a, a broader crisis, a structural change that has to do with climate change and with long political uh, situations I in the Middle East. And uh, via the collections, we can show how that history has developed uh, and show well, the changes in that, the change of demography and stuff like that. And I think that's important. So it's, well, that it's a political problem uh, and it's connected to well, very strongly climate change uh, crisis in Syria, for example, with drought in Syria, drought in Russia, which changed uh, wheat prices. So it's a very complex uh, global trade and uh, environmental thing which also means that we can't talk about the crisis of 2015. This is a structural change mm. in the world. And we have seen many so such changes in history. So we can, in a way, de-dramatize that maybe, to show that the world is constantly changing mm. uh, and we don't know what will come. We know that uh, the system we have been in is changing dramatically. Mm. So hopefully w we can show that Everyone needs to, to integrate to something new. It's not about integrating newcomers into a, a Swedish society. It's integrating all of us into a future resilient society. Mm. Interesting. I mean, I, I actually really agree with that, that we need to come out of a very systematic approach. I mean, when we think about power and where the power lies and how, um, you know, who defines quality, where should it be shown, to mm. whom, you know, with what prominence, yes. you know, a lot of those dis decisions are so ingrained and embedded in our systems mm. that until that is changed, actually, we cannot move, move away from that and make real leaps in, mm. our, in, in our progress. Mm. Yeah. And in a way, it's ex exciting times, uh, even if uh, critical, that, that the awareness that uh, the modern system that we have been living in for, well, we can discuss how long, but was still that that is definitely changing mm. and that's visible in dramatic uh, and scary ways but, but it also broadens that in understanding uh, and it op opens opportunities mm. and to merge all these different changes mm. uh, into one. There are different reports by EU talking about initiatives which are targeting refugees and migrants um, sh should also promote an active engagement of this target group in the planning, in the implementation, in the evaluation. So, Karen, I turn to you, because uh, you collaborated with a Syrian uh, poet, Bari Khalil, um, on a poetry project with almost uh, 100 children from Sweden and also from different backgrounds like Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Palestine, um, to name a few. These children, they wrote poetry about war, about fleeing, about settling in a new country. Um, and now you have a poetry book, very beautiful, that is published in uh, Swedish and in, um, and in Arabic, called um, The Whale Swam by the Stories that We Left in the Sea, with also illustrations by another Syrian artist based in Damascus. So from your experience, how did the, the art message differ when you work with an artist who experienced the exodus, who experienced the trip? 
I mean, this, uh, to take part in this pro project has many dimensions for me. And uh, like before I was working with a lot of social projects, uh, including a diversity of people. But this is like the first time, uh, like you said, someone uh, from Syria who is leading the project is his ID and I'm following mm -hmm. him. He made a, a lot of different projects in Syria. Uh, also working with refugee children there, mm. coming from Palestine, Iraq, mm. before the war in Syria. Mm. And he also worked with children who um, who been uh, in hospitals. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what we do in this project is uh, like showing uh, showing ways how you can use creativ creative writing mm. for for uh, expressing yourself and for making a change mm. in your life. Mm. Uh, that's like one of uh, the reasons with the projects, like to to show and help the children uh, use their words mm. uh, to say what they want, but also like to ordinary their thoughts and use imagination. Can I just say something that what's very refreshing about what Karen has said is that she speaks about the Syrian po um, poet uh, Khalili in a way that he's so much more, and that moves beyond the very sort of tokenistic approach that we have towards diversity. So, um, you know, we are, there is a growing recognition of the power of bringing arts into the community and using that. Um, and, and with it, we understand that there is much more complexity in doing that kind of work than we thought 10 or 20 years ago. Um, and all those things that we, ha we have taken for granted, we now need to rethink so that we come out of this kind of uh, practice mm -hmm. of, of tick boxing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's, yeah. And I think children, like, uh, to, to work with them and to, like, get their thoughts in, uh, in a way that we can read and mm -hmm. uh, get their pictures is, like, they have come so much further mm -hmm. in this thought than we has as adults. We are still like, ah, you're from there, you're from there. Yeah. But they have real friends. At least where I come from, it's not so segregated in the schools. They are like mixed and they meet and they make real friends and, mm. and they don't, then they don't think there's so much difference between mm. the different children. But I, I think that this, uh, what you say takes us is also to this whole kind of discursive or it's this uh, conceptual thinking. It is how we also move from uh, multiculturalism to something it's we have called with my colleague Ivor Stodolsky, I work with pluriculturalism, that we actually uh, recognize plurality within us because we all are plural. Mm -hmm. I mean that we can move on from that, that okay, well, we tolerate others, we work with, we have these different backgrounds mm -hmm. because we, as you said, that we all have kind of mood, we are all under different it's, uh, influences and so on and we all carry different kind of pluralities within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And also when you work with artists, is our starting point is now that we work with artists. I mean, it's kind of, whether they are Syrian, whether they are Egyptian, whether they are Swedish, I mean, it's kind of, they are professional artists. Mm -hmm. And we work with professional artists with different kind of positions, different kind of engagements, and we take it from there. And I think that's one of the problems with this so-called refugee crisis, which is not crisis, mm -hmm. For me, it's not crisis, it's basically shouldn't be crisis that we just had to face people as human be beings and these movements, mm -hmm. basically, as you mentioned, that it's, it has been going on mm -hmm. for a long time and, and we are just going through different phases of these movements. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's the media populism is like trying to package it to this kind of mm -hmm. concept of refugee crisis. I mean, this crisis. And for, for whom? Uh, yeah. And for Sweden, I think it's been like a huge opportunity for many small places because mm. before we were like out of people, and now come these like uh, mostly very like cultural uh, people, rich, yeah. rich yeah. people yeah. who have like a lot of experience and like doing things in our small community uh, that changes things mm. that to the better mm. and also creates more uh, economy, also, but. Mm. Maybe that's not the main. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But the yeah. change is yeah. actually. Yeah, no, well of course, that's yeah. real integration. Uh, a, a project that is aiming at integration becomes very strange. Mm. So, all these dialogue projects, 
but we don't know what we should speak about. Mm. But we should speak, just mm. by this very <laughs> strange way. But if you are in a local community where there has been a lot of internal crisis, you get new resources, new people mm. coming in, thinking in different ways, being younger and so mm. on. And then you can start addressing the real things and mm. cooperate. Mm. And then, of course, you mm. integrate and do something proper. But, but this, so all these like fake smaller. projects that just aim at getting people to speak, mm. but not, I mean, why should we speak with everyone? Mm. We should cooperate with people we need to live with and work mm. with. But, but and I think what you are kind of generally talking about is I, I come, uh, my background is this in, in contemporary art, this, this is generally the problem in, in socially and politically engaged. It's art that you have to have a real engagement that you don't use as kind of this participatory element or kind of community as your fake material, mm -hmm. that you actually need to engage this project. That they don't turn out to be another, it's Olapur Eliasson project in the Venice Biennial doing green lights. Yeah. No, <laughs> that, that's not what we are talking about. And I think that this th then we ended these questions is, for example, Claire Bishop is this addressing in artificial health and so on, that we had to be really aware, mm. as you say, that this mm. what are these dialogue projects mm. about and profound mm. and, and also have longer term engagement. Otherwise, it's again that we use it as uh, refugees as some kind of material for our mm. kind of artistic mm. projects. And I'm really against it. Mm. This is basically uh, that that's not the way. No, I think that's a, like a joint mm. thing. This it takes time, yeah. and it's about staying put, even when mm. there yeah. comes problems and so on. Yeah. I mean, we will all fall out in different ways, but yeah. the way forward is to stay put, mm. and then running after after the current crisis and wanting to be engaged yeah. uh, will become cynical uh, and counterproductive. So I think it's mm. very interesting to see that it's it's mm. about being in the community and. Staying put yeah. and overcoming things yeah. uh, and showing that you're there for real, not just. Yeah. Um, well, we're all sitting here around this table. We're working on shifting narratives through arts. We're working on integration, but it's a bumpy road full of skepticism and unfortunately a lot of right wing and populism that is deconstructing what we're trying to change, hopefully. Um, but my question, and I'm trying here as well to be critical of what we are doing, um, how can one workshop, how can production of uh, one book, how can a production of one residency, one calligraphy workshop, one exhibition, how can this really help in the road to feeling integration? Is it enough? Um, how it's it's a question to everyone, in, including myself. How can mm. we make sure that we produce quality work mm. in the middle of all of these fundings that we hear about? Well, I think that there's something about whether you're producing uh, content or hosting a show or delivering a workshop that we are creating. Um, spaces and, and that content that allows for intercultural encounters. I think it's, uh, we, we all have its different approaches in, in, in uh, working with, uh, it's your, your question was that how not to kind of, yeah, quality, yeah, it was uh, about the quality. Uh, we work with uh, professional contemporary artists coming from different locations and so our way of working in also within Perpetuum Mobile and Artists at Risk program is that we work with artists on long-term basis. They might have a residency for three months, for 12 months, but we work with them it's this, uh, for years also when they are back and, and produce their artworks. It's, it's follow the processes and, and so on. So I think it's kind of this long-term commitment is, is uh, one of the answers, even though the positions are different. The artists we work with are often oppressed in their home countries and they have really little resources or support actually mm. to work with uh, their professional art production, which is really often actually both intervening and reflecting and showing what's going on in the world in really powerful way. Just to give you a couple of examples, for example, it's, it's, uh, we have worked uh, now uh, for several years uh, with uh, artists from Diyarbakir, Erkan Özken, 
who is Gerdis, but who doesn't emphasize that. He's an artist, and his latest uh, work is uh, called Wonderland. It's this amazing, it's a short video and short film where he's filming a deaf and mute boy who witnessed everything in Kobani, I.S. did, without any words. And when you see it, it is it's showing really clearly that how we here in Western world actually closed our eyes mm -hmm. for everything that boy who is deaf and mute, who stayed in Erkan's brother's family, so he has a personal connection to this boy, and there are reasons he did that film, really clearly is actually opening up all of that for us in front of our eyes. And I think it's this contemporary art can work through senses, actually. It can show things, it's we can hear things, and, and so on. And so it can be really its powerful tool. And our culture is really visual culture as well. And I think that this is contemporary art, music, plays a really crucial role, actually. It is also kind of showing something else than ma mainstream media is showing us. And I, I think that these are the ways, there are really many ways. I mean, you, you work a community-based, is, is contemporary artists have actually really many engagements, is, is they can work yeah, on long-term basis yeah, on communities. Yeah. Yeah. Ex exactly, that there's not one way. And no. I think that it's nowadays, especially how I see it is after 2008 that these uh, kind of strategies and political engagements, they kind of vary a lot. Mm -hmm. And artists also are involved in the movements in, in different ways. Yeah. Side by it is, is uh, ecologically engaged people, politically engaged people and, and, and uh, so on. Yeah, and we have very different institutional roles as well. I mean, we are a state institution which uh, gives us uh, certain powers and possibilities, but also, mm, well, we can't do all these small-scale uh, community-centered things because we have another, like, broader uh, mission. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in a way, we shouldn't take too much of those money. <laughs> but mm -hmm. That should go to the people that are actually working. But we can be a window to show what's going on, to invite the good examples. So. Uh, also to see that not everyone can do everything, but w we can cooperate. Mm. And uh, as always, I mean, the, the don't run after the money, the people that are working and continuously doing good things, mm. they are the ones that should be funded and we should help that come about mm. rather than seeing the opportunity to grab mm. things mm. from it. Yeah, I mean, I certainly don't think we should be taking away <coughs> the role of the larger institutes, certainly from a Rosetta Arts perspective, we work always in partnership with much wider, bigger, larger institutes that don't necessarily have the, um, the very localized remit that we do. Mm. Um, and we're th then able to respond in, in a much more agile and flexible way. And I'm sure that yourself as well, when you're working with artists, you're able to respond because your connection is directly there. Um, Shanaz, <laughs> I want to touch upon the Brexit and post-Brexit changes in the UK. And speaking of funding, there is uncertainty about funding future for arts and culture yeah. in the yeah. UK. And in general, like the society, how, again, how can a community arts center working in marginalized area function or operate mm -hmm. in this atmosphere of uncertainty and growing populism? Yeah, I mean, 17 months on from the uh, disastrous Brexit vote, uh, we have absolutely no clue about what, what the exact impact is going to be. Nothing is really clear, and that uncertainty is incredibly um, tricky for people and for organisations working and, and being in, the, in those communities. I think that it highlighted for us, for example, where we are based in Rosetta, we in Newham, we, you know, it's a high proportion of ethnic minorities um, and also all the neighboring boroughs in which we work. And yet, even though many of those boroughs voted to remain, there was still quite a high proportion that had voted to leave. And so it exposed this uh, hostility that we know has been bubbling away for quite a long time between, uh, between different ethnic groups as well as um, you know uh, 
the intensity of the kind of areas that we work in, there is a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. And so people feel, um, feel fear, they feel anxiety. And so, um, you know, that's why it's incredibly important that cultural diversity remains a priority for, for the UK. I, I certainly would be also interested in Marita's point of view in terms of working with artists across borders. Um, how you see that also in terms of does the UK agenda, is that something that has been um, from, a, from, from someone that works with artists across different backgrounds, is that something that is a concern? Do we, do we only feel it? Okay, it is from my point of view personally, I mean, this the whole kind of Brexit, it's, it is and it's going to be disaster if, if it's going to happen. But I see it at the same time, it's, it's of course, we have this backlash of nationalism, it's, it's yeah. everywhere in Europe at the moment, it's hand in hand with this kind of right wing growing fascistic tendencies is coming from Finland where it's, it's really strong. Yeah. We witness different kind of movements like if we think about this is like what's happening in, in Catalonia and, and so on. And I see it more as some kind of its crisis of uh, nation state, of course, right now. And uh, political groups are looking for different type of answers at the moment is is basically local answers is kind of uh, then there are this kind of national defensive reactions and 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 so on and uh, i think it's is basically we we had to see the bigger picture because actually it is global corporations which are ruling us at the moment mm -hmm. and people are in a way actually reacting to those economical crises mm -hmm. but then again is 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 Basically, we should be able to kind of unreveal it's, it's, it's what is the real cause, because basically we should democratize this kind of global cooperation. This is not about kind of going back to old kind of nation state. Absolutely, and I think that that you know Marita hit the nail on the head with that, and also from a very local point of view, just how disenfranchised people feel, and really looking at that, and from a from our perspective. Why, why do people feel um, so threatened? Why do people feel like they're an outsider? And then what's the backlash now? So um, I was at a, I just yesterday was at a event where we had uh, creative and cultural leaders across the UK. And you know, people were talking about how they feel like an outsider, how they feel that they're not welcomed anymore. And they're doing incredibly powerful work there. Mm. That um, they have a real value for us and yet they want to leave because they don't feel that there is a place for them here. Mm. Um, it's very, very tricky. On a very personal level, it's very tricky. Um, on a professional level, on a societal level, mm. you know, we're feeling it and the uncertainty mm. is not helping. Mm. Klaus, Karin, if you have any uh, last comments to respond to that, Europe as a safe haven. I'm interested in in, uh, in this view that it's not about just a crisis on the Middle East, it's also about like how Europe always participated to all the oppression in the world. And now why like this movement of people, we also like questioning our uh, privilege, 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 yeah. privilege here uh, by taking in people from other places but uh, some I think art is a good way to like make it possible to talk about this because if you talk it straight it's really tough mm -hmm. like and you feel yeah. really judged mm. but if we can like also with art discuss what we uh, have participate to make this crisis happen it's not about like we taking care of the Middle East, no. no. Uh, yeah, moving away from the charity approach, mm. which yeah. is, you know, mm. Mm. Yes. one of two approaches. It's, it's, it's either the <laughs> very charitable mm. view, and, and I think with the art we can kind of give a different, the third space. Mm. 
and I think that's that, yeah. really strong in Sweden. Like we are so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have like this image, yeah. and it's and yeah. it's it's not. But true. I think what you are talking about, mm -hmm. and then uh, Rasa quoted a poet at the beginning, is that this kind of poetry and poetic ways of showing things is kind of people are not so good at this dealing with truths often, but poetry and poetical ways of showing things ca mm -hmm. can be an easier way of talking about things. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I think that there are other poets like Neruda who wouldn't say that it's about mm -hmm. responding. Actually, I, I think that art and poetry can be actually part of change. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm kind of that generation that I, w I was, as, as you, I think it's just like uh, part of this whole postmodern discourse. And I think we are now facing also in the field of art now the different kind of engagement and is basically this kind of postmodern relativism and cynical pos positions is for me, it's this kind of over. Yeah, we, we are kind of, and yeah. then for me, when it comes to now new strategies in art, I also find it interesting that people are actually engaging to certain values and basic values, and we have to do it again, because we are living in this state of emergency. In a way, there's not this kind of luxury any longer just to kind of have this really complex language our kind of people participating in won't understand and so on. We have to be, it doesn't mean that we have to throw that away, but we have to be able to speak so that we can engage people with different backgrounds mm -hmm. and, and think yeah. about future visions, otherwise we'll be lost. Mm -hmm. We have no time for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's my position. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we need time, <laughs> but at the same time we yeah. have to be but able I to make it kind of transparent. I don't, I don't mean yeah. by like how we can use uh, art in different way, poets or mm. to like make things softer. That's mm. not like what no, I... It's not Neruda yeah, wasn't a soft mm. poet. Mm. No, I just referred to him. He was really politically engaged. said for soft power. Yeah, yeah I mean exactly. Soft power is yeah. incredibly mm. important. Mm. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't want it to end actually. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like every sweet thing, it has to come to an end. Mm. Um, thank you very much for taking part in this debate. Um, um, it's so interesting what Marita said about it's global. Mm. It's n we should not just think of it as it's our problem and our own. It is global what is happening with the changes. Um, we need to connect the ancient objects to the, to the present what is happening nowadays and reflect and learn from history. Um, we need to help people to feel safe, to feel welcome, to feel uh, recognized and valued for the work, for the contributions. Um, cultural diversity definitely remains a priority uh, for everyone working in arts and culture towards the end goal of feeling integration toward more resilient societies, undivided societies between a leave, the remain. Um, we need to allow for intercultural encounters. Quality of the work is very important. Um, refugees are not just numbers, or they are not just engaged in arts projects because they are refugees, mm -hmm. but they are really talented people c bearing very rich cultures and experiences. Um, I'm going to finish now and again, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.